In this video, we're going to go over 100 preps to stock up on while you're shopping at Home Depot. Let's get started. Home Depot is the largest home improvement retailer in the United States, supplying tools, construction products, and services. To be honest, most things at Home Depot could probably be considered a prep. It's kind of the prepper's paradise. But here's a list of over 100 preps to stock up on while shopping at Home Depot or any other home improvement supply store. These could be useful in an emergency or disaster scenarios. Home Depot has a ton of different departments, so I've created a PDF document. You can download it by clicking the link in the description box below. It's organized based off of all the various categories of items that are going to be featured in this video. So without further ado, let's start going through the list now. Let's start off first with building materials. I recommend picking up several plywood sheets. In a previous video, I showed how I pre-cut plywood boards to fit over my windows and doors of our home. This is just in case for times of civil unrest. You could also use them for other carpentry projects. To go with those, also pick up a few 2x4s. These could be used for a variety of different things for emergency purposes. You could help secure your doors, use them to build a makeshift chicken coop, and more. Next, PVC pipe. Preppers love using PVC pipe for making various caches of supplies that they could bury within their home and other locations. The next building material to pick up are bricks. I recommend picking up around 25 or so bricks that you could use for making your own rocket stove at home. If the power's out, you may need to boil water or prepare food. Creating a rocket stove out of bricks is a super fuel efficient way of creating fire that you could cook on and boil water with. There's a ton of different videos out there that show how to do this. To go along with it, also pick up some cinder blocks. You could also use cinder blocks for making a rocket stove in addition to other tasks. I like these particular bricks that kind of look like a plus sign because you could use them for making raised beds fairly quickly. No nailing wood or anything like that is needed. Just slip some cedar boards into the notches of the bricks and you could quickly make yourself a raised garden bed. The next item to get is some quick set mortar mix. I'm always concerned with earthquakes in my particular region and if there's any damage to the concrete of my home, you could use the quick set mortar mix for doing minor repairs. To go along with that, it's also a good idea to have a few bags of cement. Again, there's a ton of different tasks that you could do with cement. Next, I recommend picking up some chicken wire. You might not have chickens at the start of SHDF, but maybe you could get some. Having some supplies to be able to make your own chicken coop might be a good thing. So just pick up a few rolls and put it into your storage in case of emergency. The next prep is a few containers of gaps and cracks insulating foam sealant with quick stop straw. During an emergency situation, whether that be a volcanic eruption or a pandemic, you may want to seal off your home. You could use this insulating foam sealant to do that. The next building material are a few toilet seals. I've only had to replace these myself a few times, but if the grid were to go down, I would want to have a few of these on hand just in case. And then the last building supply I have recommended are some sandbags. It'd be really nice to have a few dozen empty sandbags if possible. Again, there's a wide variety of different tasks that you could use these for, whether that be for perimeter defense or to help in flooding situations. Here are a few appliances that I think would be good to include in your preps. Number one is a wet dry vac with a HEPA filter. This has come in handy so many times in flooding situations. If your aquarium were to tip over during an earthquake or maybe your hot water heater, it would be really handy to have this wet dry vac to pick up the water. Another item to pick up is an extra freezer. You could store this in your basement or possibly your garage. A lot of preppers have an extra freezer for storing additional items in case of an emergency. For example, we like going over to our local butcher and picking up a freezer pack of various steaks and other cuts. You could also store important documents and even cash in your freezer because oftentimes if your house were to catch on fire, the freezer in your garage might be the last thing remaining. And then the last appliance to use as a prep is a mini fridge. Yes, I said it, pick up a mini fridge. During normal situations, use it as a beer cooler or for keeping soda or anything like that. But if there is a power outage, you could move your important items from your main refrigerator into the mini fridge and then keep that mini fridge powered with something like an energy solar power bank. It'll take less power to keep that one going compared to your larger primary refrigerator. Now let's go through some various hardware. A good prep to have is a nice ladder. The little giant seems to be very popular with the contractors that we've hired for our home repairs. But during an emergency situation, you may need a ladder for doing things that are up high, whether that be for cutting down a broken tree branch or going up on your roof. Next, pick up a few ratchet tie-down straps. These things come in handy all the time, especially when transporting large goods with your vehicle. The next hardware to pick up are some nails. Make sure you have plenty of nails for various projects. Also include some three inch or three and a half inch screws with the Torx bit head. You could use these for securing the plywood boards to your windows. Replace the short little dinky screws that you may have in your exterior door frames with these longer three inch versions. It'll make it harder for a bad guy to kick in your door. Also make sure you have plenty of staples for your staple gun. Another good item to have is a hand truck. Southern Prepper One recently featured a hand truck as an important prep to get, which I totally agree with. For example, I have a lot of modules in our garage that may need to be moved and having a hand truck would make it much easier to do. You could also use it for moving appliances, maybe water barrels, and in a very bad situation, maybe an injured person. And then the last hardware that I recommend getting are some permanent roof anchors. 
we recently added roof anchors to our roof as a safety measure for contractors and people that are up on the roof. During an emergency situation, such as a wildfire in your area, you may want to go up on the roof and set up some sprinklers. And it'd be really unfortunate if you slipped and fell. So Home Depot also sells a safety harness for going up on your roof. This would also be a nice item to have. Home Depot has a good selection of earthquake supplies. The items that I'd recommend picking up is some quake hold putty for securing small items to your shelves. Also the furniture straps, which I've featured on my channel in the past, for securing any furniture that's above chest level. You wouldn't want it to fall on you during an earthquake. If you have your TV sitting on a stand, make sure you pick up some TV straps for earthquakes as well. And last, pick up the gas shutoff tool that's also available in this section. After an earthquake, it would probably be a good idea to turn off the gas going into your home for safety purposes. Here are a few electrical items that might be good to have as preps. Number one is a voltage tester. You could use this for checking various lines and outlets to see if you have power. To go along with it, I also like having an outlet tester as well. It's also a great idea to have a camera system in your home. Right now we have an Arlo system, but ideally it would be best to have a wired camera system for your home for security measures. This will allow you to have eyes and recordings of all important parts of your property. You could have the monitor to keep track of what's in the camera system in your living room, in your office, or even your bedroom. Tony Montana from the movie Scarface liked having his camera system by his hot tub. Next, pick up a few outlet timers. If you're ever away from your home, it'd be a good idea to have a few lights connected to these outlet timers and then have them set to go on and off at various times during the night. This will help it make it seem like someone's actually there in the home when they might not be. And last, make sure you have several long extension cords. If the power's out and you happen to have a generator, you're probably gonna run some lines to various important items like your refrigerator, freezer, or even your aquarium. Now's not the time to look in your Christmas lights to find those extension cords. Make sure that you have several ready to go. Speaking of generators, Home Depot also has preps to use for power purposes. You could pick up various gas power generators at Home Depot. I like looking at which ones the food truck drivers use for their generators because oftentimes they're the more silent of the generators. Next, Home Depot is a good spot to pick up various battery cells. You could pick up your AA, AAA, C, D, 9 volt, and more. I oftentimes find them at good prices at Home Depot. And then I store them in the MTM ammo boxes to help keep them organized. Links in the description. I also like picking up the larger batteries that you could use for your riding lawnmowers, for example. You could use these for various makeshift projects. For example, I use one of these for making bleach using the MSR SE200 Community Chlorine Maker. Home Depot also has a few good items for fire safety purposes. They have a wide selection of smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. It's good to have these in the main areas of your home, in addition to next to your bedroom areas. You could also pick up fire extinguishers at Home Depot. They have a wide selection ranging from ABC to Purple K and more. Make sure that you have a fire extinguisher in every floor in your home, in addition to a special one in your kitchen and in your garage. When you're looking for fire extinguishers, pick up the ones that have metal handles. Usually the plastic handle ones are one-time use only, but frequently the ones with metal handles are refillable. Home Depot has a wide selection of gardening supplies. It's so big of a selection that I could probably list off 100 gardening preps that you could get over at Home Depot. So to keep it simple, I'm just gonna say pick up some general gardening supplies, whether that be plants or gardening tools or dirt or fertilizer and more. One item that I'll say that you should pick up are some ceramic pots. Not only can you use this for your container garden, for example, if you wanna have an herb garden, but you could also use them during power outages as a heat source. There's a lot of great videos out there that show how you can make a heat lamp using two of these that are screwed together and a couple tea lamps. As you probably know, you don't wanna leave these things unattended, but they are a nice and inexpensive way of adding a little heat to your room during a power outage. Home Depot has a few different items that you should probably pick up for your preps for heating, venting, and cooling. The first one being a dehumidifier. These come in really handy for flooding situations. For example, in our basement, we've had some flooding that's happened, and after you remove all the water, it's really handy to have a dehumidifier in that room. You could use your gas power generator or your energy solar bank for providing power to it. But not all of these preps have to be for power outage situations. You may still have power, but you do have some water in your basement. So having a dehumidifier would be nice to have. If you have an exterior air conditioner, I would make sure to pick up an air conditioner cover. This could be useful if you had a volcanic eruption in a region. You wouldn't want a bunch of ash getting in your expensive home air conditioner unit that's outside. So just pick up one of these inexpensive air conditioner covers. Here are a few home improvement items. The first being some snow and ice melter. Our driveway's on a hill, so we have a few five gallon buckets that have some of this de-icer. So it could be ready to go during times of snow for our driveway and also for our walkway. You wouldn't want anyone slipping. Next, as preppers, I think we should all have super secure mailboxes. When we first purchased our home, we just had the mailbox that came with the home. But almost immediately, our neighborhood started going through problems with people stealing mail out of the mailboxes. 
So get a very secure mailbox that's more trouble than it's worth to try to get into. And then another good item to pick up at Home Depot is a secure door. Right now, our front exterior door is not the door that I would want as a prepper. It has a big glass window in it that would be very easy to kick in. So to go along with those three to three and a half inch screws that we put into the door frame, we're also going to be upgrading all of our exterior doors to something a lot more sturdy. So a bad guy couldn't just easily kick it in. If they're going to kick it in, they're going to have to work for it. Home Depot is a great place to pick up various cleaning supplies. They have so many various general cleaning supplies, I'm not going to list all of them. So in general, you can pick up some cleaning supplies at Home Depot. Another good prep to stock up on are some contractor bags. These ones can be used for a wide variety of different purposes. You could use them as makeshift ponchos, you could use them for water gathering purposes, for makeshift shelter purposes, for sealing off a broken window, and also sanitation purposes. I think it's a good idea to have around 100 contractor bags ready to go in your preps. And then another good item to have is a multi-use sprayer. I use these when I'm cleaning gravestones, which is a hobby of mine, but they could also be used for a wide variety of different purposes. For example, at the start of COVID, we were spraying down all of the packages that arrived in the mail using a viricide and we stored that viricide in this multi-use sprayer. So I think a multi-use sprayer is a good item to have for pandemic preparedness purposes. Now let's go through a few lighting preps that you could get at Home Depot. Home Depot has a pretty good selection of flashlights that you could use for various kits. Now I wouldn't recommend these for your EDC flashlight or for a really nice flashlight, but they are a good option to have to have inexpensive flashlights stored in various locations and kits. Next, pick up various motion lights at Home Depot. Bad guys don't like coming to houses with a lot of lights around them. It's too much of a distraction and it makes them visible. So pick up multiple motion lights and you could use those in conjunction with the home security camera system to illuminate a potential bad guy if they're outside your home at night. I also think it's a good idea to have portable floodlights available. You could use these during normal purposes in your garage, but during an emergency situation, it would be a nice idea to have some floodlights available if you're having to stay out in your backyard for an extended period of time. Maybe even have a makeshift medical center set up in a tent in your backyard, and it would be nice to have this type of portable floodlighting available to provide illumination. And then last, I recommend having about a dozen outdoor solar lights. For normal purposes, this could provide illumination to your walkways at your home. But during a power outage, you could bring these solar lights inside and use them for illuminating inside your home. Here's a few outdoor preps to pick up. The first one being a chainsaw with fuel, chain oil, and an extra chain. You may be in an emergency situation after a hurricane or tornado or high winds where you've had some trees and branches that are tipped over and need to be cleared. Having a chainsaw in this type of situation is basically a mandatory item to quickly and easily cut down fallen over branches and trees. There's a whole bunch of other outdoor tools that you can pick up. There's so many again that I don't want to list all of them, but in general I see these type of tools as preps that you could use in an emergency situation. Whether you have to dig a ditch outside to make a makeshift outhouse or fill up some sandbags and more. For blizzards, make sure that you have a really nice snow shovel. I wouldn't recommend cheaping out on this one either. Get something that's super durable. Not only can you use this for snowstorm purposes, but you could also use this if your home is impacted by a volcanic eruption. There may be a lot of ash outside of your home and on your roof, and you definitely want to make sure that you remove that ash from your roof because it's extremely heavy. Again, if you go up on your roof, you now have these permanent roof anchors and the roof harness system that we talked about earlier. But mainly, I think the snow shovel will be used for snowstorms or blizzards. Another good prep to pick up at Home Depot are various hoses. The longer the better. Now I'm not talking about using this for watering your grass or your plants. I think it'd be good to have these for times of civil unrest in addition to wildfires. You may want to set up some sprinklers on your roof if your home is near a wildfire. Yes, you may end up evacuating your home, but you could always have the sprinklers running up on your roof and maybe you'll get lucky. I also think it's a good idea to have for times of civil unrest just in case some bad guys decide to throw a Molotov cocktail on your roof. But in general, make sure that you have a few super long hoses in case of an emergency. Here are a few items that you can pick up at Home Depot for fuel purposes. The first one being some gas cans. I'd recommend having three to four five gallon gas cans ready to go with the fuel and stabilizer. The next prep to get are some propane tanks. I recommend having three to four of the barbecue size propane tanks. You could use this for normal purposes for your barbecue grill, but during an emergency, you could use the adapter cable to use for powering your smaller propane grills, like the ones made by Coleman. You could also use that propane for heaters. Next, pick up a few jugs of the denatured alcohol. I use this with penny stove to use for emergency purposes. Penny stove is a very inexpensive way of having a stove in your evacuation kits. And then having some denatured alcohol is a clean fuel to use. And then last, I recommend picking up a few bags of charcoal. You could use this charcoal in conjunction with your Dutch oven for cooking purposes. Dutch ovens are awesome for camping in addition to emergency purposes. I like having that charcoal to put on the lid of the Dutch oven for easily controlling the temperature when cooking or baking certain items. 
Let's move on to plumbing preps. There's way too many plumbing preps that you could pick up in case of an emergency, but here's just a handful. I think it's a good idea to have a drain weasel ready to go just in case your sink gets plugged. This isn't really for emergency purposes, but you also don't want to be that prepper that when you have a clogged drain and you don't have something to clear it off with, you don't want to have someone say, hey, I thought you were supposed to be a prepper. So these drain weasels are fairly inexpensive. Make sure that you have a really nice plunger. I like these accordion style plungers. They always do the trick for me. Although they're kind of nasty too, because it sucks up everything when you're using it. Next, pick up some PVC primer and cement. If you have to do any kind of plumbing repair or if you want to make some caches for outdoors you'll want to have some of this next pick up some extra pipe fittings and extra pipe after an earthquake for example you may have some leaky pipes that might be repairable and if the stores aren't open it'd be nice to have some extra pipe on hand and then last make sure that you pick up a few outdoor freeze protection insulated wall faucet covers you don't want the water in your faucets outdoors to freeze so during the winter time or if there's a blizzard coming make sure that you have these installed here are a few supplies to pick up at the paint section during civil unrest or a grid down scenario, I think it'd be good to have some primer because you may have to cover up some graffiti or spray paint that might happen at your home. Speaking of spray paint, I also think it's good to have some spray paint. I use spray paint for making the lids of my storage bins match the color of prepping. So I have bins with various colored lids. But you could also use the spray paint in an emergency situation to make your house a little bit of a decoy. Maybe you could draw on some Katrina X codes on your door or just make it look like your home's already been ransacked and tagged by bad guys. For insulating your homes, I think it's good to have a few tubes of caulk this could be for pandemic purposes or during a blizzard or even a volcanic eruption. Also in the paint section, I would recommend picking up some clear plastic sheeting. In a previous video, we covered making a pandemic containment room. So having some thick mill plastic sheeting would come in very handy for that. You could also use it for other tasks such as sealing off windows, water gathering, and more. And then pick up a few heavy duty tarps. These have a wide variety of different uses. Although I like having them on hand in case I need to seal a room off. For example, if there's a power outage and a snowstorm and it was cold throughout your home, you could hang up these tarps to isolate a room to help it retain heat. Home Depot has a ton of PPE items or personal protective equipment. First, you could pick up some knee pads, also some safety glasses, high visibility vests, hard hats, earplugs, pick up a few Tyvek suits for pandemic purposes. They also have these style face masks, although I prefer N95s if you could find them because they work better. Home Depot has a wide selection of work gloves. It's a good idea to have work gloves in your home and then also in your various evacuation kits. And then pick up some of these all-purpose gloves. If you're having to work with chemicals, for example, it's nice to have protection for your hands. If you wanted to, you could use these in conjunction with those Tyvek suits. For pest control, I think it's a good idea to have around a dozen rat traps. I even have a little rat traps module. Now, some people use peanut butter on these rat traps. Although what I found out that works best is half-cooked bacon wrapped around the rat trap with picture frame wire. It works for me every time. Speaking of modules, let's move on to storage and organization. I go to Home Depot to pick up a lot of my various storage bins. The smaller ones that I use for a lot of my home organization are the Sterilite shoebox bins. They're fairly inexpensive, they're clear, and then I use a label on the outside to show what's inside of it. I also pick up the larger storage bins for the garage. In a previous video, I showed how I spray paint the lids to match the color coordination system that I use for my preps. I have these stored in our garage. Home Depot also has a good selection of storage shelves, which you'll want to have for your storage bins in addition to other preps. For example, the five gallon buckets that you have for your long-term food storage, in addition to five gallon water jugs. Home Depot has a wide selection of storage shelves that support various weights. Speaking of five gallon buckets, Home Depot has a good selection of five gallon buckets. Make sure that you look for the food grade ones though. You could get the other ones and use them for other purposes, for example, as a makeshift toilet or for storing de-icer and other things. To go along with those five gallon buckets, Home Depot also has a gamma seal lid knockoff. I prefer getting the official gamma seal lids, although Home Depot has its own version. I use these type of lids for my long-term food storage. And then last for storage and organization, you could pick up a metal trash can. You could use one of these as a Faraday cage. So if there is an event like an EMP, your electronic devices, if stored in this metal trash can, would be protected. You could also use it for storing other preps like toilet paper, for example. Although for preppers, the metal trash cans are specifically for Faraday cage purposes. You could also pick up your five gallon water bottles over at Home Depot. They have some really cool water bottle racks that I'd love to have for the garage, but you could usually find the five gallon water bottles themselves for a reasonable price. A few miscellaneous items are zip ties. Zip ties could be used for a wide variety of different purposes. I like having various size zip ties ready to go. Another miscellaneous item are yard signs. I think it's a good idea to have a few different yard signs available during an off-grid situation, whether that be a no trespassing or a sign warning that you have a scary dog, even if you might not. These could help as a deterrent for a potential bad guy that was looking to try to get in your home. The next prep to get at Home Depot is tape. Home Depot has a wide selection of various tapes that you could use as part of your preps. They have a large selection of Gorilla Duct Tape. I also think it's a good idea to have some caution tape on hand, just in case you want to disguise your home as a biohazard site. They also have Aqua Seal Tape, Extreme Weather Tape for outdoors, 
It's always good to have electrical tape on hand, foil sealant tape, transparent weather seal tape for your windows in case they get broken. And then I also like having several rolls of the plumber's Teflon tape or PTFE pipe sealant. This comes in handy for me all the time. And the last category to go over are tools. We could probably make a video on 100 tools to pick up for your preps from Home Depot, but I'm just gonna list out around 10. The first one being a power drill. I believe for emergency purposes that these would come in handy all the time, whether that be for building things, for putting those three inch screws into your exterior doors, for attaching the plywood sheets to your windows, and more. With all the power tools, it's probably best to settle on a single manufacturer and battery cell. The next tool is a reciprocating saw. This tool comes in extremely handy for various demolition projects, and it seems to be the go-to tool that I see a lot of the contractors use that have come over to our home for various repairs. You could cut through wood, metal, pipe, and more. And then the last power tool that I have is a circular saw. You could use this with the two by fours, which we covered earlier for those plywood sheets, for building a chicken coop and other cutting tasks. The next tool that you probably already have, but make sure you have a good hammer. I prefer the hammers that are made by S-Twing. S-Twing's been making high quality hammers for going on a century now. They're made in America and built to last. The next tool is a crowbar. Just like with the hammer, I like going with crowbars that are made in America. These can be used for a variety of different prying tasks and would also make a good addition to an urban evacuation kit. The next tool are some box cutters. I like having box cutters as a utility blade for various projects. The next tool is a staple gun. I think it'd be good to have a staple gun for emergency preparedness purposes, for quickly putting up things like tarps and plastic sheeting. Again, make sure that you have plenty of staples on hand. But if you needed to make a containment room for pandemic purposes, or even hang up some tarps or heavy sheeting during a power outage or a blizzard to help isolate a room, having the staple gun would come in handy. Again, I try to go with the ones that are made in America. Just a few more preps, the first being some wire cutters, make sure that you have some of those. I also think that having a caulk gun would be a good thing to have. During a blizzard or a pandemic or a volcanic eruption, you may need to seal off certain parts of your home. And to go with the quick set mortar mix that we covered earlier, make sure you also pick up a hand trowel. That's gonna do it for this video, featuring a list of over 100 preps to stock up on while shopping at Home Depot. Again, the primary intent of having all of these various preps is to have them be useful in an emergency or disaster scenario. As mentioned earlier, I provided a PDF document that you could download in the description box below. It has a list of all the items and categories that were covered in this video. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Again, the Home Depot is basically prepper's paradise where they have a ton of different things that could be used for preps. So leave your comments below in the comment section with regard to what preps you recommend picking up at the Home Depot. Down the road, I could gather up all of the comments that you leave in this video, and then I could create a secondary PDF to bundle with this particular video based off of the comments. So if you like these type of videos, consider subscribing to my channel. I also have a weekly and monthly newsletter, in addition to being on various social media sites. And thanks again for watching this video featuring 100 preps to stock up on at the Home Depot. See you next time.